everybody, I'm Laura Trump coming to you from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. We have a lot to be thankful for in America these days. And Thanksgiving Day gives us an opportunity to give thanks for all of our blessings as one nation under God. Joining me to discuss giving thanks this year is a national faith leader and spiritual advisor to President Trump, my friend, Pastor Paula White. Pastor Paula, we are so excited to have you join us and especially here for Thanksgiving. Thank you. Oh, Laura, I'm so excited to be with you. And we do have so much to be grateful and thankful for. You know, as we think about Thanksgiving, I think about First Thessalonians, how it talks about give thanks continually to God. And we look about why we even celebrate how our President Abraham Lincoln put this as a, you know, federal holiday. And, and when you think about that, you think about gratitude. And gratitude comes from this root word of gratis, which means to be pleasing, to give praise. And it literally means God's grace and favor. And oh. boy, I'm just so grateful because we still, not just still, I, I love MAGA. Our president <laughs> is making America great again as the greatest nation in the world. And we are so thankful. Oh, well, Thanksgiving Day always gives us a great opportunity to stop our busy lives and reflect on the blessings that mm. we share as one great big American family, don't you think? Absolutely. You know, sometimes that people will tend to look and it's a tendency for people to look at the negative or what's wrong in life. But there's so much that's right in life. There's so many great things that are happening as we just see again how much God has blessed our nation and what he's blessed us with this administration. Yeah. What's happening with the economy? What's happening with prison reform? What's happening with I wrote an op ed on the EO that no one ever heard about. And it was alleviating poverty over three million people that have come off of welfare and food right. stamps. There's so much to look up and say, thank you, God. And people might not be where they want to be, but you certainly are probably not where you used to be. And we know God has just taken us to a greater place. And right where you are, just give a little prayer and say, thank you. That's what it's all about. Giving God praise. That is what it's all about. And Paula, you have known the president for so long, and you know as well as I do, that the hardworking families that are gathered together on Thanksgiving are never far from the president's thoughts, are they? You know, Laura, it's one of the things that I love to share with the American people so much, because our president works tirelessly, the people around him, and he does so, he didn't have to run for president. I remember standing in the office, 2011, he said, Paula, would you bring some people around me to pray? I'm thinking about running for president. We prayed for almost six hours, Laura. I mean, the pastor's just praying because he was really earnest. And he, he was successful in everything he's done. And I looked at him, his family, all of you. And I said to him, I said, as my friend and as the family, it's, it's the last thing I'd like to see, but this <laughs> nation needs it. Yeah. And I watch him every day get up and just make a move and things that I think, man, I would have thrown in the towel and went back to my business. <laughs> but he loves, he loves the American people. Yeah. And, you know, quite honestly, I think America needed a Superman. And what I'm saying is we were looking for someone that had the courage to put the cape on. And I believe that cape is a mantle by God that he is wearing to take our nation in the right direction. Oh, it's so, so true. And you've also known the president as a spiritual advisor, as you kind of just mentioned, for a, a very long time. And people, I'm sure, Paula, always want to know from you, how much does faith play a role in his decision making? It's a huge part of his life. Um, this is an aspect that I've had a relationship for 18 years. And Laura, starting, I start at the very point. They go, well, how did you get to know then Mr. Trump? I said, I got this phone call out of the blue. He was watching me on Christian television and he called up and, you know, my office was playing around. They said that, well, they were and I was. They said, Mr. Trump's on the line. I said, sure, sure. If I was watching the purchase, I think I would have said, you're fired. Finally, after waiting for a while, I get on the line and it was actually him. And he'd called out of the blue and he verbatim repeated to me three of my sermons on value of wow. vision. And he began to tell me about his walk with God, how he was confirmed Presbyterian, grew up in Norman Vincent Pills Church. And I was just, I was amazed because I thought he listens better than most of my congregation. <laughs> and I realized the impact that God and faith had on his life. And over the years, I got to know his mother was a very strong Christian praying woman. 
I understood how he would go to Dr. Billy Graham Crusades, Dr. David Jeremiah, and again, so many influences in his life and how dear faith is to his heart. So when he became president and he says things like, we worship God, not government, that's not a good political saying. That's the authentic Mr. Donald Trump, who is now President Trump. That's the authentic man that I know. And I could sit here and I know we don't have time, but tell you just story after story. I'll give one. I, I would rarely, whenever I was in town, I have a place in New York and I had a church in New York and he'd always say, call me if you're in town. And he'd say, stop by. And I think, well, they're going to kick me out of the office, you know, <laughs> and I just sit there for hours. And one time I was selective about who I brought up, but one time I brought some friends, uh, one of a very well-known church, big, one of the largest ministries in this nation. And I brought another girlfriend, Deborah, and we I start conversing with him. And he looks over and he says, D what does she do? Deborah, what do you do? And she said, well, sir, I, I have a ministry to the prostitutes. I go out on the streets and I take care of girls that have um, been battered and are get, been abused or given their life into, you know, they're either in sex trafficking process. And he just stops her midway and he says, Rona. And he says, bring me my checkbook. Oh. And just right there on the spot, writes out a check for $10,000. I've never and heard this story, Paula. That's amazing. Oh, Laura, I saw it over and over. And there was a man in the office. He goes, you need to do something too. Get yeah. your checkbook. Out. Everybody donate. Oh my gosh. You know? And it was just, but it, whether it was that or whether it was, I mean, I can tell you so many stories on, you know, time after time. We didn't start praying for her. I didn't start praying for President Trump when he w was running for office. This started back in 2001, mm -hmm. you know, 2000. And, and so often, I mean, he would just call up and say, Paula, pray for this, whether it was for the children, whether it's for your husband, Eric, you know, whether it was for, whether it was for business, it was, it, it was so common. And I could go on and on about story after story about how important faith is to him. Well, it is, it's truly something I've always known is very important to him. And who better to speak about it than you? That, that story I, I had never heard. So thank you for sharing that. One of the issues important to faith leaders as well is the First Step Act, a bipartisan bill that will reform our prisons and improve the criminal justice system. Give us a little more detail about that, Paula. Well, I am so excited to be a part of this. It really is amazing how it started when President first went into office. We had about 40 faith leaders come in and do a dinner with him and Jared and Ivanka were there and a few of the senior advisors and staff. And a conversation took place at, uh, at Jared's table. This was actually the genesis of everything. And we talked about how if churches, we visit the prisoners and, and we, we churches, people of faith really feel a mandate by God. And it, it's not just a mandate, like we want to help and give people, listen, our entire story is a story of redemption, that God's grace gives second chances. Right. So this Genesis, how it started was a conversation that said, if every church in America or a lot of churches in America had the ability to adopt a prisoner when they came out, we would dramatically lower the recidivism rate. Well, Jared's ears popped up. He got so excited. So we started having a meetings and he really began to champion this with the president and the president got fully on board. I saw so many meetings I could reference to. Um, I, I just want to give one quick one, Laura, that I don't know if people saw, but we were having a private meeting in the Roosevelt room and going around and this was in the early stages of it. And the president said, well, what about violent crimes? Can a person really be rehabilitated? And that's a very valid question. Yeah. And there was a man sitting across and we we're kind of smiling because we knew who was in the room and his name's Sean. And he said, professor at Georgetown. And he said, sir, he said, I was in prison for 12 years for armed robbery. And he told a story about how faith changed his life, how he got out. And because of faith base, there were people that helped support him so that he was able to get a job. He was able to to get housing was not easy. He was able to reacclimate. He was able to be around people who supported him. He's now a professor at Georgetown. Amazing. And president looked over, smiling, said, I think you make a better professor than a bank robber, Sean. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and I saw it catch and he went, boy, this is what I want to do. I want to help people who want that help. So first step helps, of course, keep our communities safe. But what it does 
is it gives the ability, not just only through faith-based, but it helps lower, the greatest thing I think it does, what we focus so much on, it's going to lower that recidivism rate because we help people reacclimate their life. And that is by the right support. It's also rolled back some of the, you know, really uh, bad legislation that was done under President Clinton. And so what we've, what we've been able to do is make a huge difference. And I pray, I know we're right there. We were with the, many of the senators last night, and, and I just believe this is going to be a huge win for all because it's a win for humanity. You know, it affects one in three Americans are affected by people that are in prison. Mm -hmm. And what we recognize is that most people who get out of prison, 95% of those will be released from prison. And the recidivism rate is so high that I believe, I have it written down some here where, but it's like uh, uh, close to 90% will go back within five years. Right. Well, under this first step, that recidivism rate, boy, I believe we'll get it under 50%. Wow. <laughs> I think we, we will see great things happen. Wow, that would be so incredible. It's so important. I think it can make a huge impact on people's lives. And if it affects one in three people, like you're saying, I mean, the impact is, is yeah. so far that um, I, I know it, it will do such great things for people down the line. And I'm so grateful that you're there working on that. And Paula, thank you for your time today. Thank you for, for sharing some incredible stories about our president and about your relationship with him. And thank you for everything you do every day to pray for him and our country. We appreciate you so much. It's my honor. And thank you and, and Eric and Luke and everyone <laughs> else. We love you guys. And we're just so grateful to know that not only our president's championing it, but he's got an entire army behind him that is standing strong. And we just pray everyone has a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Paula. While there will always be challenges that draw people apart, this Thanksgiving Day gives us a chance to give thanks for all the blessings we share as one nation. That's the real news for today. I'm Laura Trump from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. Have a very happy Thanksgiving, everybody.